Welcome to Preaching That Matters. A place you can find apostolic Pentecostal preaching. A place where all generations can be fed with the Word of God. We hope you enjoy. Chained by writing, Tape Ministry, P.O. Box 248, Tioga, Louisiana 71477. Let the tape roll. May you be blessed by this ministry to the glory of God. We're going Thank you. God bless you. You can return to your seats and remain standing. Such a beautiful presence of the Lord here. We give honor to the Spirit of Christ here, to Bishop Timmy all of the board members and committee members, all of the saints and friends, God bless all of you. It's good to be with you once again. And we uh, certainly give honor to those who have preceded us in ministry. The word of the Lord has been such, such powerful words of God. Sister who just spoke, uh, spoke directly to us and I've got part two of that message matter of fact she took a lot of stuff that I'm going to preach she's already said it so I guess we'll just have to say it again it's good to be back in this conference I I have thought very fondly of the time that I spent with you last year here I preached a couple of messages how many remember doing the rain dance? And how many have come out of or stopped doing the rain dance and are dancing in the rain? Yeah. Amen. Some of you have mentioned the break the box, and I, I hope your box is still broken. Certainly after a message that we've just heard, we should be broken. If you don't mind, I'd like to go right to the word of the Lord. 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 1 and verse 8 through 14. I'm going to ask you to work with me today and follow as the Spirit shall guide. 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 1, verse 8 through 14. Oh, he playing softly. How many have it? Yeah. Now Naaman, captain of the host of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master and honorable, because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. He was also a mighty man in valor, but he was a leper. Now Naaman, captain of the host of the king of, Israel, of Syria, was a great man with his master and honorable because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. But he was a leper. 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 Verse 8, and it was so when Elisha, the man of God, had heard that the king of Israel had rent his clothes, that he sent to the king, saying, Wherefore has thou rent thy clothes? Let him come now to me, and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman came with his horses and with his chariots and stood at the door of the house of Elisha. And Elisha sent a messenger unto him, saying, Go and wash in Jordan seven times, and thy flesh shall come again to thee, and thou shalt be clean. But Naaman was wroth and went away and said, Behold, I thought he would surely come out to me. Stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and strike his hand over the place and recover the leprosy. 
Now, if I'm going to consider this man's offer, verse 12, are not Abana and Farfar, rivers of Damascus, Syria, better than all the waters of Israel? May I not wash in them and be clean? If I'm going to do this, at least do it on my terms. So he turned and went away in a rage. And his servants came near and spake unto him, saying, My father, the prophet, had asked you to do some great thing. Wouldn't thou have done it? How much rather than when he saith to thee, Wash and be clean. Then went he down and dipped himself seven times in Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God. And his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child. And he was clean. Turn to the person next to you and ask them, do you have leprosy? My message today shall be centered around these words, honor or healing. Honor or healing. Join hands with the man next to you. Father, bless us now. We're in definite, desperate need of you. God, I'm just conscious of your presence here and your anointing, the, the unction. Oh, God, I, I, I'm not even worthy to stand here and deliver this because you've given it to me. God, help me to, help me to share it. Help me to declare it. Hallelujah. Let there be a wave of the Spirit that shall go up and down and from the front to the back heart move in this place like never before use me God like you've never used me before in Jesus name hey God clap your hands and you can be seated God bless you I'm going to ask you to work with me here and I want to just, by way of introductory comments, say that my message today is intended to provide an opportunity for personal challenge with various degrees of comfort and discomfort. But before moving forward, I would like to ask this question. Honestly, I'd like for you to answer it. How many of you brought some needs to this meeting that you know that only God can answer. Everyone that has answered yes, I want you to pull off your shoes. I'm going to join you in just a little while. I tested the floor while I was over there and I found that it was a little cold. And so if it's too cold, then just kind of put your foot on your shoes and if it gets too rough, then, you know, you can slip your shoes back on. How many feel comfortable with your shoes off? All right, all right. If you feel comfortable with your shoes off, I want you to take off your tie. Take off your jacket. without inspiration from God. I, I am not a wild and crazy preacher, uh, but uh, I have felt to ask you to do these things. And as I look in the scripture, there's a number of opportunities for God to do things that are a little bit out of the ordinary and out of the customary. How do you explain God doing some of the crazy things that he did. It didn't operate within the confines of our box. Now, if you'll allow me to lay a proper foundation, I, 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 I have some place to go 
but it'll take us about five minutes or so before I can start getting there, and I want to lay a foundation that's necessary for us to consider. While I was in college some years ago, I was interested in the study of psychology. Many of you that uh, have taken psych courses, uh, as I, wanted to uh, find out and to search out the what and the why of man's behavior. And as we begin to study psychology, we find that not all psychologists agree on uh, personality and behavior theory. Proponents of behavioral psychology believe that human behavior is controlled by external forces. While proponents of psychoanalytic psychology believe that behavior is controlled by internal unconscious forces. Humanistic psychology uh, suggests that uh, you incorporate aspects of both behavioral and psychoanalytic psychology. Sigmund Freud, uh, all of you have heard of Freud, was one who was a proponent of uh, psychoanalytic theory. And he divided the personality into three parts, the id, id, the ego, and the superego. The id represents the biological forces, and it is always present in us, according to Freud. It is governed by the pleasure principle. Give me, give me, give me, satisfy me, take care of me. And Freud saw sex and violence as the energy for the id, the id. Notice how Hollywood has capitalized on the id principle. However, the ego is the surface of the personality. It is the part that you show the world. And it is governed by the principles of pragmatism and reality. Uh, the ego uh, prevents oftentimes the gratification of the id based on pragmatic things. A child that wants to steal a cookie will not steal the cookie while you're present watching him. He is pragmatic and the ego controls the desires of the id at that point. The superego consists of two parts, the conscience and the ego ideal. The conscience decides what course of action one should take. It is the metaphor of the angel and the devil on the each shoulder. The ego ideal is an idealized view of oneself and comparisons are made between the ideal and one's actual behavior. Maslow, as a theorist, rejected the idea that human behavior was controlled only by internal forces. Instead, he suggested that People have certain needs which are unchanging and genetic in origin. He said that these needs are the same in all people across all cultures. They are both phys physiological uh, and psychological. Maslow, you will recall, said uh, that these needs are hierarchical in order, meaning uh, that there are some needs that are more basic than others. They're more powerful than others, and as these basic needs begin to be satisfied, then higher level needs called growth needs emerge. And once these are reasonably satisfied, then one may be able to reach the highest level called self-actualization. He suggested that only one in ten individuals become fully self-actualized. Basic things, the basic needs are things like food and sleep and uh, safety, while growth needs are the things like love and belonging and mastery and prestige. All of you indicated, or most of you indicated, that you brought some needs uh, to this meeting. What kind of needs do you have? I would like to uh, lay that aside for just a moment and uh, begin to dissect the text 
and go back to the foundation as we see a need to as we begin to progress this afternoon. On the stage of our text, we are introduced to two characters. I will deal with the minor character first. And the minor character was the prophet Elisha. He was the successor of Elijah. This was the man who was commissioned to minister to a broken nation. They, Israel, was broken in their concept of self. Militarily, they were not that strong. Economic conditions were not very good in Israel at that time. And Elisha felt that in order to rebuild and restructure and recover and to minister to a broken nation, that he would need a double portion of Elijah's spirit. He continued the school of the prophets to teach young men how to say yes and hear what thus saith the Lord. In spite of the bleak conditions, he established himself as a miracle worker of God. Now we leave Elisha for a moment and consider the main character, Naaman. We are given the resume of Naaman in 2 Kings chapter 5 and verse 1. This resume reads like the who's who of uh, military uh, strategists. Uh, Naaman was the Colin Powell of Syria. He was captain, the Bible says, of the Syrian army. He reported only to the king. The Bible begins to give us his resume and says that Naaman was a great man and uh, he was an honorable man which means that he was well respected and highly regarded the bible goes on to say in his resume that he was a mighty man uh, of valor he was a man's man he was strong and fearless he was aggressive he knew how to take charge and lead by example. He was an awesome military strategist. He planned uh, the pursuits of Syria. And uh, the clincher in the resume of uh, Naaman was one of the last couple of things said about him was that the Lord was with him. Now, the most uh, outstanding aspect of that resume and the thing that stands out in my mind so much is the fact that the Lord was with him. For how could the Lord be with Naaman who was not a Jew but a Syrian? Mm -hmm. How could the Lord be with this Syrian who led uh, armies into Israel to destroy the people of God. And the Lord was with Naaman. Something's happening on this monitor. Turn it up or do something to it. Uh, get, get it back where it was. The Lord was with Naaman. How could God do that? Naaman was not in covenant with God. Oh God, he was one of God's enemies. But the Lord was with him. How do you explain it? I don't have all of the nuances to explain it except to say that it is called favor. Favor is God giving you what you don't deserve. No matter what you do, can you help me out here? Your fasting doesn't merit it. Your praying doesn't merit favor. This is of grace. It is not of seniority. It is not of merit. God blesses you not because you've earned it, but because he's designed to bless you. He'll make people uh, who don't like you turn around uh, and bless you. God said, I'll make your enemies your footstools. Uh, but brothers 
Christmas afternoon, I want to tell you that God is an economist. If God invests in you, he plans to get something from his investment. He doesn't bless you for you to be blessed alone, but rather he touches your life so that you can touch the life of somebody else. That's why, my brothers, if you're on the mountain today, then you ought to strengthen somebody who's in the valley. If God anoints you, he wants you to get ready for the assignment. Get ready, Naaman. God is preparing you. And so here is the resume of Naaman. He is commended for his character. He is commended for his professional accomplishment. He is commended for his valor. And the Lord was with him. But before we get ready to nominate Naaman for president, before we draw up the balance and have his name on it, there is something in the resume buried at the end where you hope the recruiter won't pay too much attention. Oh, that, oh can I preach like I feel this morning? There was a conjunction in the sentence. There was a conjunction in the sentence. Something to potentially negate all of the public persona at the press conference. Just when the press corps was about to fall in love with Naaman, just when Time Magazine and CNN and ABC were ready to interview Naaman, just then some reporter found a butt in the resume. Found that there was a three-letter word, but, but, but he was a leper. The resume reads fine when it says, and he was, and he was, and he did, and the Lord was with him. But why did God put that little disclaimer there in the resume? But he was a resume. Huh? The ego, the pragmatic side of us, only wants to reveal the resume that reads and, 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 and. Ah, but the id, Freud, in all of us, drives us and it points out the instincts of our humanity demand that there will be a but in the resume. From the best of us in here to the worst of us, there is a disconnect between the conscious and the ego ideal. The Bible says it like this, for the flesh is at war against the spirit and the spirit Spirit is at war against the flesh, but he was a leper, but he was a leper. That part of our character, that part of our personality, that part of our nature that seems to come up even when we don't want it to. After shouting in the aisles, after speaking in tongues, after preaching the great sermon, all of us still have to deal with the conjunction in the resume. But he is a leper. Ladies try to cover it up with a long dress, but the slip is still showing. Men put on suspenders to try to keep it concealed. Some try New Year's resolution, but the leprosy is still there. Ego says hide it, push it aside. It says don't hurt me, give me more pleasure. Maslow's basic needs says hide me, I need safety. Brothers, today we live in a time, certainly when the church is 
under scrutiny from within and from without. And sometimes we can project our ends, 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 that part of the resume we want everybody to see. And then when the imperfections are shown, when the what is disclosed in the resume, we get disillusioned. But he is a leper. But he is a leper. You must understand today that that phrase, but he is a leper, cannot be understood as an isolated part of Naaman. It has to be understood in the context of the total man. God spoke to me last night and said, for God was with him in his leprosy. And the other side is, and God was with him, but he had leprosy. Can I preach like I feel this morning? God was with him in his leprosy, and God was with him, but he had leprosy. Even when we don't want to admit it, even when we don't want to deal with it, we must face the fact, but he is a flirt, but he's got stray eyes, but he is impulsive, but he is irrational, but he is a temper person, but he uses pornography, but he's been a molester, but his marriage is on the rocks, but he's on his way to divorce court, but he's had an affair, but he is a single parent, but he's been molested in his child, but he's got homosexual urges, but he can't hold a job down, but he doesn't pray, but his emotions have been hurt, but but, 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 turn to the man next to you and say, stop fronting it. Tell him you might as well admit it. You've got leprosy. Now tell them, say, that's the bad news. And here is the good news. Tell them, say, God is with you. Tell them, God is with you. Even in your leprosy. Now tell them, say, I'm with you also. again, I'm with you also. Sit down. Leprosy is not contagious to 95% of the population. 95% of the population has a built-in immunity against leprosy. Come on, somebody. Uh, you're not going to get leprosy by hanging out with me. Uh, you're not going to get leprosy uh, by helping me and reaching down uh, and grabbing me out of my mess. So what are we going to do with this great man who's got leprosy? Can I get some more monitor? L leprosy is caused by a germ, and it attacks the nerves of the hands and the feet and the face. That's cool. Leave it right there. Don't touch it. Unable to feel pain, sufferers are particularly prone to injuries and burns, which often develop into ulcers and tissue loss. 
and fingers and toes become shortened and deformed as the cartilage is absorbed back into the body. At this time in history, there was no cure for leprosy. There is a cure today. Leprosy thrives in overcrowded conditions, poor nutrition, poor sanitation, and poverty. But how is it that this great man got leprosy? Surely he wasn't poor. Surely he lived in the burbs. Come on, somebody. But the but is in all of our resumes. starts as a white spotty disease but it comes to destroy you and to get you off balance for once your toes and your fingers uh, amen are shortened and absorbed back uh, into your body then you can't walk straight no matter how hard you try can I tell you my brothers today you can't cover up leprosy with English leather No matter how much languor feel and old spikes you pour on leprosy, you can't deal with leprosy with superficial stuff to the skin. You've got to be healed of leprosy. Leprosy will isolate you socially and destroy you spiritually. The enemy wants us to hide it. He might behind the ands and the ands and 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 in our resume. Or else he wants us to hold our head down between our knees and despair. My God, he wants us to shun our brothers that have leprosy. But I stop by to tell you, God is not afraid of leprosy. Matter of fact, let me tell you, go tell Lazarus, I'm not afraid of the fact that it's stinking. Matter of fact, go tell David, I'll have mercy on his adultery and restore his joy. Go tell Peter that even though he committed assault with a deadly weapon, he's still in the ministry and he'll preach the dedication sermon of the first church. Tell Thomas, I'll restore his faith. Tell Moses, his temper tantrum will keep me from putting him on the Mount of Transfiguration. Tell Elijah, his discouragement won't keep me from taking him up into heaven. Now, Bembry, go tell the men of Louisiana. Tell them that Jesus will pick them up if it has to reach way down. Come on. Tell these men that have been bruised by life. Tell them that no weapon formed against them shall be able to prosper. Tell these men that have leprosy, I'm with them. Somebody shout yes. Tell the men in Louisiana that there is no need that they brought to this meeting, but I'm not able to handle. But let's consider the process of healing. This captain 
of the army. Bible says they went into Israel and they took a little Jewish girl, brought her home to the house of Naaman. She was Naaman's wife's slave. Come on, somebody. Strategically placed in the house of Naaman. A nameless maid. God set it up. May I tell you, you're important to God. It doesn't matter how messed up you are. God said, I'll never leave you. Come on, somebody. In the fire, I'm there. In the water, I'm there. In the sick trouble, you're not by yourself. With leprosy, I'm there. God will go through any means necessary to let you know he's with you. He'll disrupt the universe. He'll bash heads. He'll change the order of the climate. He'll move people out of the way just to let you know he's with you. God dropped a slave girl to be a witness to this Colin Powell of Syria. She had nothing to gain. But all right, she should have kept her mouth shut. Come on, somebody. For if her God was so good, why would he allow her to be picking up Naaman's wife underclothes? Come on, somebody. And changing the poo-poo. Come on, somebody. She recognized that even in captivity, she had purpose. She had a mission. Even when her people were steeped in idolatry, she had a sixth sense. Come on, somebody. God will allow you to be put in an inferior position such that you can reveal his glory. I may not have a title. I may not have any money. I'm not a who's who. Nobody calls me to preach, but God's getting ready to use me anyhow. Somebody shout glory. She said, oh, would God that he was in Israel. Come on, somebody. Because we got a prophet over in Israel. Come on, somebody. Naaman was so desperate, he jumped on the offer. His king sent him, follow the protocol. His king sent him to the king of Israel. And his healing got hung up in some diplomatic crossfire. But thank God that there is a bomb in Gilead. If you really want to get your healing, you can and will be healed. While folks are wondering, talking and holding their nose, somebody needs healing. While folks are playing politics, being jealous of somebody, came for healing. The prophet Elijah heard about the dilemma and said, bring him to me. Naaman had gone with a letter and with approximately $2.5 million as a gift to the king. Turned the procession around with his entourage, with all of the limos, come on somebody. And went to the house of Elisha. Elisha understood protocol. 
Come on, somebody. But instead of playing to the end and the ego of Naaman, he went directly to Maslow. Come on here. And he spoke directly to the basic and the growth needs of Naaman. God knew that the real need of Naaman was healing, not ego stimulation. And so Elijah didn't even bother to get up out of the uh, out of his lounging chair. He said, oh, just go tell him to go wash in Jordan seven times. He understood protocol. But he said, hey, you over there, go tell that man, just go wash in, in Jordan seven times. Naaman was furious. The tire tracks are still there where he sped away. Come on, somebody. He said, I thought Elisha would come and do his hoodoo voodoo. Oh, and leave my honor intact. And leave my ear alone. And leave my eagle alone. I thought. Turn to somebody and tell them, stop thinking. There comes a time when you have to say any way you bless me. I'll be satisfied. I'm not worried about my title. I need healing. I'm not worried about protocol. I need healing. I'm not worried about my honor. I need healing. Just heal me. Just heal me. Jordan was dirty, muddy, filled with bacteria and pollution. The paper company dumped their mess in Jordan. Come on, somebody. And so Naaman said, listen, if I am going to consider what this crazy man said, at least let's be healthy about it. Dip seven times? Doesn't he know the ands in my resume? Why Jordan? But God works in a mess. God rides on the wind and the storm. He can turn a mess into miracle. Look where he brought you from. He's already saved your soul. The hard part is already done. But why can't I go back home to Syria? Come on, somebody. Why can't I go back home to my comfort zone? Then he tried to use some logic with God. Are not our rivers cleaner than all of the rivers of Israel? Yes, Naaman, you're right. But I can't change you until I take you out of your comfort zone. You're comfortable in Syria. You're well liked there. But in order for me to heal you, I've got to change you. You eat up the praises of the people. Your needs of esteem are met. But there is a growth need on your way to being actualized in me that has not been met. There is a growth need called humility. 
Now, Naaman, your leprosy is still in the early stage. But if you leave it untreated, it's going to destroy you. So Naaman, the choice is this. You can be a good dressed up leper in a thousand dollar suit and five hundred dollar shoes and still be a leper. Or you can take off the shoes of your pride. Take off the shoes of your comfort zone. God, I feel like preaching here. And go over to Jordan. Jordan represents a crossing over. It is death to pride. It is death to the instinctual desires of the end. It is death to the ego. Moses, you're in the presence of God. You've got to take off your shoes because they're dusty with where you've been and where you've been and got nothing to do with where you're going. Your shoes are too dusty with the status quo. They have protected your feet. But now Moses, I want you to be vulnerable in my presence. You've never been on holy ground before. But feel the warmth of my anointing on holy ground. Naaman, Naaman, I know it takes you out of your comfort zone to have to bend down and take off your shoes and go into the dirty waters of the very people that you beat in war. But do you want to be healed? Here comes the servant. Said, my father. Naaman must have been a good man. Even the servants called him by a familiar name. Come on, somebody. He must have been good. And she could have said, master. But she said, my father. Come on, Naaman was a good man. But he was a leper. Come on, somebody. God was with him, but he was a leper. He was a leper, but God was with him. And so she said, my father, I know I'm out of my place. But if the prophet had asked you to do some great thing to stimulate your ear, If the prophet had asked you to do some great thing to massage your ego, wouldn't you have done it, my father? Come on, somebody. How much more when he asked you to do this little trivial thing called go wash in Jordan seven times? My father, you're a good man. Everybody likes you. Come on, we're pulling for you. We believe in you, Naaman. You can do it. You better keep somebody around you that'll tell you the truth. And this also speaks to the need of men to support men. Because it really doesn't matter what your condition in, my brother. Come on, we're pulling for you. You got a problem? You're in the right place. There are no big eyes or little U's. All of us need healing somewhere.
And so he went down and dipped one time. Nothing happened. Two times, nothing happened. Three, four, five, six times. Nothing happened. Oh, but my father, the prophet said seven times. Come on, somebody. Seven times. Probably not going to work anyway. I'll go down anyway. Seven times. And the Bible said his skin was healed like the skin of a baby. Now can you imagine the joy in that caravan? Naaman was smiling from ear to ear. Everybody was excited. Nobody in his caravan was looking for him to fall so that they could get and stand on top of him. Come on, somebody. Everybody was pulling for Naaman. Can you hear Naaman now? Said I thought my honor was important. But just look at me now. I am healed. I am healed. Just wait till I go tell the soldiers. Just wait till I go tell the king. There's no God like the God of Israel. Somebody is going to leave this service here. God spoke to me last night. Spoke to me a few days ago. But then he spoke to me last night again and said, I'm going to instantly heal some men in the service. Naaman the Syrian 
when even an Israelite was healed. Why? Because of favor one. And that's what God is giving you in this meeting is favor. To be surrounded by the presence of God is called favor. And the second thing is that when confronted with the id and the ego, even when he first pushed to the side, he came back and he became willing to push past the ego. And take off his shoes.
Maybe somebody else doesn't understand you. Maybe somebody else doesn't want to touch you because of the leprosy. But I came to preach to you today and to tell you that have, you can have hope. Jesus said, have, these lepers came to Jesus and they said, have mercy on us. We're not going to try to pretend that we don't need you. We got a problem. Have mercy. On another day, the Bible says that a leper came to Jesus and the Bible described it and said that the man was full of leprosy. But in his humility, he came to Jesus and said, Lord, if you will, I know you can. Jesus said, I will. While other people say, no, 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 don't get close to me. Jesus says, I will. While other people are not sensitive to the needs that you brought here today, Jesus said, I will. Peter said, you'll never wash my feet. And Jesus said, look, if I don't wash your feet, don't even think about going to heaven. Jesus plays hardball. And Peter said, oh, if that's the way it is. Then it ain't a big deal about me taking off my shoes. I take off my socks too. Come on, somebody. Because I want you to wash not only my feet. I'll take off my suit coat. Because I want you to wash me all over. Wash my head. Wash my mind. Wash my emotions. Wash me. I surrender all. I surrender all. Lock arms with your brother right now. Lock arms with him. That's right, cross the aisle, cross the aisle, lock arms with your brother. While you're locked arm in arm, would you just begin to walk slowly as close as you can to this front of this building? Just begin to come, 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 locked arm in arm. Locking arms, locking arms, locking arms. Locking arms. Hobo Shatabaka. He told me Listen to me. By your locked arms, you're saying to your brother, I'm not scared of your leprosy. I 
I'm not afraid to touch your leprosy. You're not afraid to touch me and my leprosy. Because no matter who we are in here today, no matter how many ands are in our resume, there is a but. Buried where you don't want it to be seen, in the closet someplace. There is a but. So I'm not afraid to touch you. Because you're a light person just like me. You're just like me. I'm just like you. I'm no better than you because I'm preaching. I'm going to ask you to get ready for healing. God told me that some of you were going to be instantly healed today. Instantly. Some of you are going to leave here and be healed. But some in this building right now that have taken off the shoes of their experiences, their pride, their id, their ego, are going to be instantly, instantly healed. We're going to, I'm going to call for seven prayers. And after each prayer, I want us to collectively just kind of Now, Lord, we come to thee. We've taken off the shoes of our comfort zone. Have mercy on us. We are naked and open before you. We're not ashamed to be naked and open before you. We bring our id, our ego to you. We expose all of our needs to you. We acknowledge the butt in our resume. Heal me, Lord. Heal my bitterness, Lord. Heal. Heal, 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 heal. Heal my repressed feelings of anger, heal me, heal my lustful thoughts, heal me Lord, have mercy on me, create in me a clean heart, recreate in me a clean heart, renew a right spirit within me, give me a deep cleansing Lord. The off-brands won't do, Lord. I need an industrial strip cleaner. Clean me, Lord. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Then will I teach transgressors their ways. And sinners shall be converted unto you. Now let's take a dip. Brother Dean, I want you to come and pray the second prayer.
Father, we know the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. He hath founded upon the seas and established it upon the floods. And you said through the psalmist, Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Who's going to enter into that holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. Clean our hands, Lord. Clean our hands, Lord. And cleanse our hearts. Forgive us, O Lord, of uncontrolled manly lust that have tried to dictate to our emotions. Forgive us for our failures to pray, our failures to seek God first and His kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Brother Jones, come and pray the third prayer. Oh God, our hearts have been cracked open today. The marrow and the bone has been separated by the wedge of your word today. We stand, Lord, with no covering, nothing hidden from you. Your eye sees us, not as we wish we were or pretend we are, but as we really are today. God, we hide nothing from you. We come before you needy and broken. Failures, Lord, in so many ways. We can ask for no justice, Lord. What we ask for today is mercy, O God. Forgive us our failures, Lord, as husbands and as fathers. Forgive us our failures, Lord, as shepherds and as sheep. Forgive us our failures, Lord, as servants as men, as human beings. Forgive us for when we were cruel and unthoughtful and inattentive, oh God. Forgive us for our lack of attention to your cause and your plan. Cleanse us by your word today. Don't let us leave the same as when we walked in, but let us go home with new skin, new hearts, new bone, new marrow cleansed by your word and by your mercy in Jesus name Brother Almond Brother Almond come I want you to pray the fourth prayer Lord, we are nothing without you. Lord, we need you right now to help us. Nor the help do we know. You can do what no one else can do, Lord. We ask you right now to look into our innermost beings. Heal, Lord, not only our physical bodies, but also, Lord, our spiritual man. Lord, let this healing be of such a nature And this comfort be of such a nature, Lord, that we'll be able to comfort and to heal those with the comfort whereby we have been comforted. Touch us right now, Lord, is our prayer. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, we dip again. Bishop Mangan, come on. I want you to pray the fifth prayer.
You made us in your image. You want us to be individuals. Thinking like you think. Walk like you walk. You knew when you made us and you gave us that will. You were taking an awful chance. But you did it. Because you placed in us hate. That we might use it to hate the devil. And the things of the world. You place in us love, that we would know how to love here, how to love our enemies, and how to love you. You put us together that we might love you. We might serve you. We might do your will. We're not ordinary people, but we are a peculiar people. Called by your name. Assemble in your name. Going forth in your name. I pray God somehow you would impute in us power. We already have the power and authority, but God give us wisdom and knowledge how to have power of the devil and demons and scorpions and all the power of the enemy. Help us to use it in the name of Jesus Christ. And that what you have given us, whether good or bad, use it for your honor and for your glory and for your power. Might to come against all evil and the force of the enemy. You have made us to love you and to fight the devil and to fight the things of evil. We love you and we thank you for everything you've given us. May we use it for your honor and your glory. May we walk just like you walk, talk just like you talk. And let us always be in that pre-creation state, like Adam and Eve was, where he walked with you, not in the cool of the day, but every day. Walk with you hand in hand, mouth to mouth, and ear to ear, love to love, walk with you. Thank you, Jesus. Let's dip again, brothers. That's the fifth dip. Brother Welch, come here. Lord, touch us today. Lord, beyond our mask that we wear, we are brokenhearted. drive nice cars and live in nice homes, but we're captive. Pray that you would bind up the brokenhearted, that you would set the captive free. Pray, God, that you would heal our sons and our daughters. Hear my brothers. God, we're on our way to the well, and we've got a big jug to put the water in, but we're so thirsty. When we draw the water from the well, we're still thirsty. God, fill us today. Forgive us for our arrogance. Forgive us for our presumption. Heal us and touch us today. We're so thankful that you're with us, God. Praise the Lord. Let's step again the sixth time. Somebody's about to be healed. Bishop Tinning, Bishop Tinning. Come and pray the seventh and final prayer. Pronounce healing. Who is man 
the thought mindful of him or the son of man that you would visit him but oh Lord not only are you mindful of us not only have you visited us but Lord you inhabit us you dwell in us we are the temple of the Holy Spirit oh God let this vessel be clean as you are clean let it be holy as you are holy let it truly be in the image of God oh Lord fill us with a spirit of forgiveness for we are no more like you than when we can forgive even if we don't understand that we're never asked that we like you on Calvary can forgive help us to commit ourselves to loyalty loyalty to our homes and our wives and our children loyalty to our churches our brothers our sisters loyalty to our pastors submissive even when we don't understand but submissive because we want to be like Jesus when he prayed not my will but thine be done when it's not our will, Lord, help us to be submissive and then we're like you. <laughs> oh, God. Heal us of our unforgiveness. Heal us, Lord, of our lack of submission. Heal us of our disloyalties. Heal us for our lack of love. Heal and we should be healed. Blessed we should be blessed. Oh Christ. In the name of Jesus, we are blessed. We are blessed. We are blessed. Now for the final dip in Jesus' name. majesty of the almighty God he said to one of the angels came and with a live coal and it touched my lips and said see I have touched you you're healed Isaiah the live coal of the word of God has been spoken in this conference by every speaker so far. The 
that's that live call that's in you right now that's performing the work of healing come on just raise your hands one more time and thank God Thank <laughs> you. 